the search for the two missing passengers ended Tuesday night in the waters of George Inlet. The Coast Guard reporting the bodies were recovered and transported back to Ketchikan. Challenges with a search like this is the depth of water in the area. It's extremely deep, uh, all the way up to shore almost. Uh, the mountainous terrain uh, with a search like this. Fortunately for us, we had the Ketchikan Volunteer Rescue Squad uh, that were assisting landside along with air support from Air Station Sitka. Uh, and they were uh, helping us to search more area. 14 passengers were on board two float planes that collided mid-air Monday afternoon. All five people on board a de Havilland Beaver were killed, and one died on board an Otter. Ten people from that plane survived the crash and were taken to hospital with varying degrees of injuries. Decisions were made on whether to treat them here or to uh, make uh, further stabilization and uh, medevac them to the Harborview uh, Medical Center. The National Transportation Safety Board now beginning its investigation into what went wrong. The way the debris is spread out and the area it's spread out in, um, there's some indication that the aircraft uh, uh, came apart uh, at altitude. <laughs> Many in the community of Ketchikan came out for a vigil Tuesday afternoon. Many knew the pilot of the Beaver. Randy Sullivan grew up here and has been flying since he was a teenager. He leaves behind a wife and two kids. My best friend's dad was one of the pilots that died, and we just wanted to show our support to him by coming and praying for all these people. Randy was a wonderful man, family man, funny, entertaining. It's a beautiful family that he left behind. He'll be missed. One Canadian is among the dead. The Alaska State Troopers identifying her as Elsa Wilk, a 37-year-old woman from Richmond, B.C. Aaron MacArthur, Global News.